Good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I would like uh, to uh, thank the organizers of uh, PDRIDM uh, 10 uh, who invited me to participate uh, in this uh, wonderful uh, pediatric arrhythmia meeting and uh, to discuss uh, mitral valve prolapse and ventricular rectopy uh, when to uh, worry. I have nothing to disclose. Mitral valve prolapse was first described by uh, Dr. Barlow in 1966. Uh, although he was not the first one who coined the term mitral valve prolapse, this was Dr. Kreidli. Uh, but uh, Dr. Barlow, in his early description of the condition, stated the prognosis of this syndrome is uncertain and sudden death may occur. Since then, it has been well documented that uh, lethal arrhythmias can occur with mitral valve prolapse. In this uh, presentation, I will discuss the prevalence, the pathology, pathophysiology, clinical presentation, ECG and imaging findings, and management of arrhythmogenic mitral valve prolapse. The prevalence of MVP in the general population is between 0.6 and 3.1% with a female predominance. Parental MVP is associated with a five-fold increase in the risk of MVP in the offspring, and first-degree relatives have a 30 to 50% likelihood of being affected. The estimated annual risk of MVP-related sudden cardiac death is between 0.2 and 1.9%. In a summary of more than 20 autopsy series uh, comprising more than 6,000 patients with sudden cardiac death between 1 and 49 years of age, 140 deaths were found to be related to MVP, uh, giving an incidence of 2.2% overall. This is a table of all these studies with the pertinent data for those who are interested to get more information. The pathology of mitral valve prolapse consists of leaflet redundancy with thickening more than 5 mm because of accumulation of proteoglycans, cordial elongation and annular dilatation. Fibrosis of the papillary muscles and basal LV free wall is very frequent and mitral annular disjunction is found in many patients. In a study of uh, 650 young adults, less than 40 years of age, with sudden cardiac death, Christina Basso and colleagues found 43 patients with MVP, with an age range between 19 and 40 years and a median of 32 years. The incidence of sudden cardiac death due to MVP was 7% overall, but it was twice as high in women. A bileaflet involvement was found in 7% of the patients. Left ventricular fibrosis was detected at histology at the level of the papillary muscles in all patients and at the inferobasal wall in 88%. The mean fibrous tissue percent area in MVP sudden cardiac death victims was approximately 30% compared to 6% in the control subjects. This is a typical pathology figure of a patient with mitral valve prolapse with thickening, bulging leaflets, whitish fibrosed papillary muscles, and elongated cordae. The histology uh, of this uh, condition is shown in this figure with extensive fibrosis of the papillary muscles as well as uh, the free wall which you can see here depicted in the bluish uh, color. The association of floppy mitral valve with disjunction of the mitral annulus was first described by Hutchins et al. in 1986. The normal mitral valve attaches at the atrioventricular junction, as you can see here on the right. In patients with mitral valve prolapse, there is often a displacement of the attachment of the mitral valve higher up in the left atrium, leaving a part of the free wall of the atrial myocardium below the valve uh, level. This has been uh, considered to be related both to the 
uh, pathophysiology of mitral valve prolapse and to the arrhythmogenesis of this condition. Potential mechanisms of malignant arrhythmias include valve-related factors such as extens excessive traction of the papillary muscles by the prolapsing leaflets, mechanical stimulation of the endocardium by the elongated cordae with after depolarization induced triggered activity, and endocardial friction lesions with extension into the myocardium, which adds to the arrhythmogenic milieu. Potential extravalvular factors have been also implicated, including autonomic nervous system dysfunction, conduction system abnormalities, fibromuscular dysplasia of small coronary arteries, and occult cardiomyopathies. In this respect, various genetic mutations previously associated with a cardiomyopathy or channelopathy have been found in some MVP patients, including the DMD, triandine receptor, titin, and filamin C genes. Clinical features of MVP include skeletal anomalies, such as straight back and pectus excavatum, and association with various syndromes with a well-known association with Marfan syndrome, Lois Ditch, and Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. Oscultatory findings include the well-known mid-systolic click and late-systolic murmur depending on the degree of mitral regurgitation. Patients can have palpitations, chest pain, and syncope, which is particularly high in those patients with malignant arrhythmias and or sudden cardiac death. ECG features include biphasic or negative T waves in the inferior and lateral leads, frequent ectopy usually of RBBB morphology but often polymorphic with monomorphic or polymorphic VT and QT prolongation. In a study from the Mayo Clinic comparing bilateral bileaflet mitral valve prolapse to normal mitral valve patients there was a very high incidence of complex arrhythmias in patients with bileaflet mitral valve prolapse, including ventricular bigeminy, non-sustained VT, and PVCs of alternating morphology. This is an ECG of a patient with mitral valve prolapse demonstrating the inversion of the T waves in the inferior and lateral leads and the PVCs of right bundle branch block morphology. Of course, the PVC morphology can vary depending on the origin of the arrhythmias, such as from the posteromedial papillary muscle, anteromedial papillary muscle, anterior or posterior mitral annulus. The complexity of the arrhythmias is related strongly to the mortality in this condition, as shown in this study, which demonstrated. I'm sorry, cannot go back. Uh, demonstrated uh, a very high significance uh, of uh, mortality and complexity of the arrhythmias. Uh, the prevalence and clinical phenotype of concomitant long QT syndrome and arrhythmogenic bileaflet mitral valve prolapse has been uh, studied by Judy Sessi from the Mayo Clinic, who uh, studied uh, 754 patients with long QT syndrome and found a 2% incidence of patients with mitral valve prolapse. Of those patients, five satisfied arrhythmogenic bileaflet mitral valve prolapse criteria. These patients showed a very severe cardiac phenotype with symptomatic status in all of them, with very prolonged QT intervals, with on-therapy breakthrough cardiac events, and with appropriate ICD therapies in a high number of these patients. In a case report on a 19-year-old patient with Marfan syndrome, the comp complex arrhythmias leading to sudden cardiac death were captured on a Holter monitor. Here in this uh, report, uh, the patient had severe mitral regurgitation that had progressed over the years. And despite uh, the absence of mitral fibrosis on late gadolinium enhancement and treatment with atenolol and losartan, he developed complex polymorphic VT, degenerating into ventricular fibrillation and cardiac uh, asystole. 
Imaging methods include 2D echocardiography with color flow imaging, tissue Doppler, and cardiac MRI with gadolinium enhancement. In this uh, echo picture, you can see the typical features of mitral valve prolapse with prolapsing thickened leaflets, elongated cordae, and the mitral annular disjunction. MRI can add to the anatomic characterization, which is shown here with mitral annular disjunction and prolapsing leaflets, and with the use of uh, gadolinium, can demonstrate fibrosis of the left ventricular free wall and of the papillary muscles. An interesting sign has been found by uh, the Mayo Clinic group uh, by the use of uh, tissue Doppler imaging. They found that high velocity mid systolic spike by tissue Doppler at the lateral mitral annulus was characteristic of uh, patients with high risk for arrhythmias. Group 1 had uh, velocities more than 16 centimeters per second, and group 2 had less than 16 centimeters per second. You can see here the typical uh, tissue velocities of these two groups. They found that group 1 had more malignant events, 67 versus 22 percent, and late gadolinium enhancement was only found in group 1. Because of the similarity of uh, this uh, tissue Doppler um, figure uh, to the spiked German military helmet, they coined the term Pickelhaube sign, and they considered this as a useful risk marker for malignant mitral valve prolapse. In terms of treatment, beta blockers and calcium channel blockers are commonly used, but with limited, uh, proven, limited proof for efficacy. Class 1 agents have been shown to be efficacious in previous uh, cases with PVC induced cardiomyopathy from other causes and can be used uh, in this condition usually without proarrhythmia. SOT alone may reduce um, the PVC burden but without proven improvement in uh, LV function. Amiodarone is very effective but with uh, limitations due to side effects. Whether or not mitral valve surgery reduces malignant ventricular arrhythmias is still debatable. There are case reports and small case series in support of that. In this case report of a patient with uh, complex ventricular arrhythmias with bigeminy and with ventricular tachycardia prior to surgery, these arrhythmias were eliminated in postoperative uh, Holter monitor after valve sparing procedure for the aortic valve and the mitral valve ring annuloplasty. This study showed a significant reduction of the appropriate shocks in patients with mitral valve prolapse compared to the preoperative uh, status. You can see here the number of appropriate shocks before the operation and the reduction of the shocks after the operation. Indications for ICD in patients with arrhythmogenic mitral valve prolapse include a documented history of BF or hemodynamically unstable BT in the absence of reversible causes. Patients with AMVP with a history of unexplained syncope and sustained or non-sustained BT likely arising from the mitral valve should, receive, should be considered for an implantation of an ICD. Patients with AMVP and one high risk features or two or more phenotypic risk features also should be considered for an ICD. High risk features include sustained VT, hemodynamically tolerated, or NSVT, unexplained syncope, and phenotypic risk features include T wave inversion in the inferior leads, repetitive monomorphic or polymorphic VTs, PVCs. MAD phenotype, redundant mitral valve leaflets, enlarged left atrium with LV ejection fraction less than 50%, and late gadolinium enhancement of the mitral apparatus and the posterior basal LV wall. Indications for catheter ablation include patients with frequent PVCs who are symptomatic or have decreased LV function. This is a class 1 indication. PVCs triggering VF particularly if not controlled by medication, again class 1, and sustained monomorphic VT despite antarrhythmic therapy 
or if antiarrhythmic treatment is not desired or contraindicated in patients who have recurrent ICD therapies. Long-term success of PVC ablation in MVP range between 60 and 84 percent. This procedure should be performed with the use of uh, imaging such as ICE or TEE with contact sense irrigated tip catheters and should only be done in centers with experience and appropriate surgical backup. This is an example of such a procedure with a complex signal found here at the papillary muscle and this is the 3D uh, image and the echocardiographic image during the study. In summary, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to um, uh, discuss the uh, consensus uh, document that was published uh, recently by the European Heart Rhythm Association uh, on arrhythmic mitral valve prolapse. Uh, their um, indications for treatment are shown in this algorithm. Asymptomatic patients should have periodic halters, and if they have no VT and no high-risk phenotypic features, they should continue being monitored periodically. Patients with no VT but with a few of these phenotypic risk features that we discussed before should have more frequent monitor. Patients with no VT but with multiple of these uh, features and or syncope should receive an ILR. Those patients who have had VT, if their VT appears to be of no high risk, they could continue being followed with an ILR. Those who have high risk VT, depending on the severity of the mitral valve regurgitation, they should have surgery plus minus an ICD, or if they have no indication for surgery, they should receive an ICD. Of course, patients with an aborted cardiac arrest should have an ICD, and if the ICD interrogation shows frequent VT, they should be considered for ablation and uh, treatment with antiarrhythmic uh, medications. This is the end of my presentation, and I thank you very much for your attention.